So as mentioned before, the development kits come in three different sizes um, and we will power one unit up. Um, Barry, could you just tell us a little bit more about the individual products? Yeah, of course, Greg. Um, yeah, we started with a 9.7 and we said it was uh, an IP65 seal. As you can see from the side, it's solid aluminium chassis uh, that you can either bolt down into a panel mount or you can have a rear cover for it. There's a couple of rear covers for it now. Uh, one of them is uh, IP40, uh, so if you don't need any protection on the back, that's ideal. And we've also got IP65 covers as well. Uh, and then you've got 7 inch, again, that's available in the IP65 or as an IP40. Uh, you can see it's the same form, exactly the same boards, so exactly the same software. Uh, the difference is that this one has a touch screen that provides a ceiling, whereas this one doesn't. And this is a low cost plastic enclosure around the outside. Uh, again, same metal, same boards. And uh, then finally, you've got the 4.3. Uh, which is great for small MMIs, HMIs. Uh, once again, exactly the same electronics on the back and your software will run the same, albeit that each one has a slightly different resolution. Okay, one question we quite often get asked is how quickly can we boot into an operating system? Uh, usually that's referring to Linux because Android tends to take rather longer like Windows. Uh, albeit we all get used to our smartphones supposedly booting quickly when we uh, press a button or whatever but the reality is it's just coming out of sleep mode. So this unit here is the 7 inch, um, same boards, uh, it's just got a slightly different version of the operating system. So rather than the full blown Ubuntu on the back, this one's got a very lightweight image and you'll see that Linux logo comes up quite quickly in about 3 seconds you'll actually see the command line. So if you're looking to uh, run your application at that point, you could be in and away. What isn't obvious is that it's actually gone looking for a file. And the reason it's gone looking for a file is it's looking for a video file on the USB stick at the back. So not only has it uh, booted in that time, but it's gone looking for a certain video file, search the USB to see if it's there. And if I power it in again now, Hopefully you can hear the click. So if you've got your stopwatch going, here we are. And there's the video running. Okay. So obviously it's a relatively uh, neat and tidy build. So there may be some functionality you need beyond that, but you get the principle that you really can get responsive applications this way. Okay, to give you something a little bit more uh, Android, Again, same boards, don't get too bothered about the blue screen on the front, it's just to make sure we don't get things mixed up. So now it's booting and you'll see the animated Android come up. Uh, you can pop in your own animated uh, sequence on there if you wish, whatever it is. But around about 35 seconds later, it'll boot into an application. There you go. Uh, this is one that we've created. As you can see, uh, it's typical of a kind of HMI, MMI. Great can't see it, so I'll pass it over that way. Um, each time you press a key, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see that, hopefully see that the, the little buttons do move and go down. Uh, just to show it's sending information, you should be able to see the screen go, brightness go up and down. So why do we show that? Well, number one, it's all based on Android. Number two, it's using Android Studio as the development environment, which is completely free. Um, unlike a lot of development environments where you've got to spend a large amount of money, uh, Google, God bless them, provide Android Studio so you can get out and running. Um, in terms of the graphics, you can see how easy it is to create. Uh, each time a key press is uh, made, it actually sends out, you can't see it obviously because we haven't got any electronics attached on the back, but it sends out an RS-232 string uh, looking for a device at the other end to respond and come back. So that is a nice basis for an awful lot of people's applications. Um, what we do beyond that is that we enhance it. So number one, how do you talk to an RS-232 port through Android? And uh, the answer is that we provide an API for all the functionality that you don't normally get on a smartphone and hence on Android. So I haven't seen a smartphone yet with an Ethernet port. 
So the API supports that. It supports the 232 chan uh, ports, so two of those. It supports the 485, 422, the I2C, the SPI, the GPIOs. So we give you a complete API to handle all that. But we also do give you some extensions so that you can lock it down. So you can put it into what we call kiosk mode, which allows you to stop people going to the system side of Android. So normally if you swipe one way or the other, you can get out to the application. And as you can see in this case, we've locked it down and you prevent it from doing that. Other things included in our unique Android uh, offering is the ability to handle the various network devices. Because on a phone, typically you're talking through uh, cellular and Wi-Fi, and obviously in this case you've got Ethernet as well. And through the little connector that we showed you on the other video, you also got CAN, and each of those is a network device, and we allow you to power them up or take them down, which is normally outside the scope of Android. So just talking about development, obviously a lot of people use um, Raspberry Pis for their, their development um, criteria. Yep. Moving on to the beta, what, what would you say is the main reason we would choose the beta development kit? Uh, if I take the power out of that one, I can start pointing to a few bits and pieces. So everything we do is built for long life. Um, there's no point in us developing something that's only got a life of one year or two years or three years because most of our customers take a fair amount of time to get their product from conception into the marketplace, get it approved and then get a return on their investment. So typically five years is a minimum these days uh, for a product to be uh, in the market for our customers to get a return on it. So number one, everything's built for long life. We choose the components. This particular uh, processor is uh, an MXP IMX6 and it's got a life until at least 2025, that kind of level. Uh, number two, all the functionality is there for you. Uh, so when you're creating your product, you don't have to connect up various modules. Uh, it, simplistically, in terms of the concept, that's, that's okay. It's a great, Pi's fantastic way of getting a concept up and running. But what a lot of customers have found is that once they're actually trying to get into production is quite a challenge, mm -hmm. especially where the interfaces are high speed. So all high speed interfaces going over cabling can create EMC issues, they can create reliability issues, um, and obviously if the life of each of those components that they've chosen isn't as long as the life of the product they're trying to create and stay, keep in the marketplace, then life gets quite difficult and going to EMC huts or thermal chambers or whatever on a regular basis is not cheap. Yeah. So, so we design everything for long life. As you can see, everything is tied to a ground, so all the cabling is, is dedicated to this uh, format. Uh, where necessary, we'll use EMC tape. Inside the plastics in here, you'll find RFI uh, gaskets effectively bonding the LCD to uh, the ground. And what we found we, over the many years we've been in business, we found that LCDs are one of the greatest noise sources, RF noise sources. So we tie it all down. So in terms of the Pi, it's fantastic to, to get it up and running. The question is what do you do when you're trying to make 100, 200, 500, mm -hmm. 5,000 of them every year and keep each one the same to keep your, your maintenance and your support costs and your calls down as, you know, so you can make money rather than spending all your life supporting it and that's where the beta comes into its, its own. Obviously it's already EMC approved, um, so we put the platform, each of them, uh, in their various guises through EMC testing. Um, if you use the recommended antennas on the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you've already got that covered as well. And we put them through thermal stress testing as well. We've got our environmental chamber. So for a product like this, minus 20 to plus 50 is standard. Uh, we can push that beyond that. The actual microprocessor board we make goes from minus 40 to plus 85. So that's got a fair range, but various other components like the S LCD will limit that as it goes along. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much, Barry. It's been uh, an eye-opener talking to you today and also looking at the products in detail. So thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure. Thank Great. you.